Okay, so now is a great point to probably print out this lure and see what it looks like in your hand, see how it feels, and see where you want to make adjustments. Especially if this is the first time you've made this lure, it'll really, really help you out. So guys, I'm printing this now before I kind of finish all the details because I don't even know if this lure is going to swim well or not. I don't know if it's going to fit together well. I don't know really anything about it. It's the first time I've ever made this bait. So if I go through the process of adding all of these details, the gills, the fins, the super cool patterns, etc., and I find out that this lure doesn't work from a overall size and profile, I have wasted like literally hours and hours of work to get a lure that doesn't actually perform. And so I print it now so I can hold it in my hand, glue it together, make sure all of the pins and stuff work well. I can paint it, I can do my clear coat, throw it in the water and see how it performs. Now the details that you add aren't really going to impact the performance of your lure to any great extent. And if they do, you just change those details. You wouldn't go rework the whole lure. But if I add all those details and find out this lure doesn't actually work, and I go back and change like the core dimensions of this lure, even though they're all in parameters, even though everything is parametric, it's still going to mess up because you'll see soon, like as we add things, like it's just not gonna line up right. It's gonna be a big mess. So print early, print often. All right guys, so let's go print this bad boy. All right, so these are the prints from my second take at supporting them. And I also went in and added a offset to the hex holes that I had, about a 10th of a millimeter uh, to give myself a little wiggle room. I think with the hex shape, it should still lock right in. Let's see how it goes. So these are the first prints. And you can see on the front here, we have a pretty substantial gap even though I try to glue these together and kind of smash them into place. It's like, it looks like they'll fit there, but uh, you know, I couldn't get anything uh, to really hold there. Super glue. I could break out the epoxy, but really it's a bad print. It didn't print correctly because of my bad supports. You can see here on the top that it has um, what I call the gloopies, right? It's not a smooth surface, so you know it didn't print correctly. So let's see if print number two worked out correctly. My support job was uh, a little bit better here. You know, we really only have support structure on the nose. And inside this cavity, it's really pretty small. And um, on the outside edge here, it's very, very light. So it should take not much sanding. Now, if they only go together. All right, so I'm gonna go through these and to see if any of these fit together better than any of the others. All right, so right away, they're looking pretty good. There's still a gap right there that um, you know I think I should be able to squeeze out. And again, I don't know what's causing that. So one of the problems with this technique is when you go to print kind of a, a thinner vertical model, you want to specifically avoid certain faces, right? So I don't want to print anything on the outside because again, I don't want to have to sand that. And I don't want to print anything on this inside edge because I don't want to sand it and that's where my, my models are going together. So when you're using a 3D printer, right, there really should not be a lot of sanding to get the parts to fit together, right? We're going to have to sand a little bit on the on the nose here and along this edge to move the support structure, but from an overall structural standpoint, right, I shouldn't have to make edges straight because they should already be straight. So I'm just going through and uh, making sure these kind of fit together. This one's nice. So, you know, some of these will fit together better than others. And I don't know what's happening here, but it looks like some of these, you know, the nose has a little bit of a bump out. Again, most likely due to me not supporting that very well. 
It could also be that one of the print runs that I did, you know, especially the one where we had that little bit of a problem with the, the one lure that the supports didn't adhere correctly, that can have a ripple effect throughout your print. A uh, little debris floats around in there and causes all kinds of problems. So it could be that like, you know, one half of that print, whatever side that one that we had a problem with is messed up. Because I have two really good ones and two not so good ones, but I think the not so good ones are salvageable. Oh man, where's my glue, bro? Gosh darn it. All right, so I'm just gonna try to put these together with some super glue, see how that works. Oh, sorry, I got the, the pegs left over from our last print. I just printed a bunch of them. I didn't print any new ones. I think I'm gonna be a little short, so I'm gonna try to just put together the two that really look like they fit together pretty well. So I'm coming through and I'm dry fitting all of these just in case I had any little anomaly with any of these pins or any of these holes. You know, I don't want to get to the point where I've got uh, two glued in and then I figure out, you know, the third one has a problem that's going to wreck the whole lure. So yeah, okay, that, that 0.10 offset worked out really well. Um, it's a little loose in there, but since you know, we have a hex shape, it really doesn't cause any problems and the glue will probably fill in that gap. Just putting a drop. This isn't really structural, right? Like we're gonna glue together this whole lure. It's gonna be encased in multiple um, layers of resin. So I'm not, you know, worried about making sure that this pin is what's holding everything together. This pin is strictly for alignment. You know, another thing that I probably should have done in my model is to offset that back face just a little bit uh, again to give me just a little bit of wiggle room it's not uh, a structural component it's strictly for alignment so you know by getting those hex uh, pins and holes you know slotted correctly should give me perfect alignment and a little back and forth here and there is not going to be that big of a deal and it would compensate for any potential print anomalies that i have All right, I'm gonna give these a few minutes to set up and go grab some lunch. All right, back from lunch. Let's see how these look. So we got um, pretty good flatness on these pins and these pins, although I got a little bit of extra super glue on the outside of that guy. Hopefully that's not too big of a deal. So let's see how they fit. All right, not bad, just dry fitting. I see that. Looks like we got a little bit of a problem at the bottom here. Yep. And we seem to have the same problem on the bottom of this one. A bit of a gap there. Now that's probably not the end of the world. Um, I might try to squeeze those together, but that's a relatively small gap that we can fill with either the clear coat resin that we're going to use or even some of the printer resin. So let's see if we can glue these together. I'm gonna use my Harbor Freight clamps here to kind of hold these in place. Ooh, I got my gloves. I use gloves when I use super glue because uh, I have totally glued my fingers together because I'm a big dork. That's why I hate gluing crap together. I'm just not good at it. What the frick, bro? Stay. 
my god, man. Alright, I only have one of these clamps left, so I'm gonna have to sub in this guy. <laughs> I forgot to add the ball bearings again. Oh man. Can't believe I forgot. I forgot that on like every lure I've made so far. What an idiot. Idiot. These are just little BBs. These are 177 BBs, I think. Plastics in there. I got no idea what I'm doing here. Too much crap for my brain to remember. Breaking out the big guns again. Probably a mistake. But in my mind, I don't know if this is 100% true, but the nose of the lure and the tail of the lure are slightly more important than the middle of the lure, right? So the nose, it's what's going to be pointing in when you're pulling it along. So you want that to be nice and in the shape you designed it in. And the tail is going to impact, you know, as the water flows over, it comes off the end, you know, which way it's going and probably most likely where the fish is going to get hooked. So you need that to be strong. The middle, we can kind of play around with. Yes, it impacts the lure and how it performs, but I don't think not as much as those two areas. We'll let this set up, we'll be right back. Hey Siri, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, counting down. Five minutes. This is super exciting, waiting for glue to dry. All right, so the first one still has this little gap on the back side, gap on the bottom, and a little gap up front. And the second one looks a lot better. We don't have a gap in the back, not much of a gap in front, still gaps on the bottom. And I removed a rattle in it. Got a nice little rattle there. Gap on the bottom of this one though is, um, quite severe. So I don't know if that's still related to my printing setup and my orientation, but I'm going to try to fix it when I put the first coat of clear coat on it. Uh, before we even paint, we, we're going to clear coat these at least once and maybe I can uh, work it into a little bit better shape when I do that. But you can see this technique of doing two halves, especially with 3D printing, is kind of really subject to a lot of errors and a lot of kind of just getting everything right. Um, now, I know some of you guys are saying like, hey, you should just print the pins into one side, but that leads you down other paths of complications. Let me show you. So here's one of the pins, you know, that I printed separately, but I'm just throwing it in this lure to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. I'm just gonna hold it in place. And so if I'm printing this, let's just say it's hanging like this, you know, I have this pin sticking out. I have to now support that pin because it's just hanging out there in air. And I got to support the whole edge of that pin. And that's going to mean supports. And that's going to mean, you know, when I go to remove the supports, the chances of me having extra material on that pin is quite high. And then I got to go in and sand this pin, which I don't know about you, but this sounds absolutely horrible. Probably not very fun. So what we're going to do in the next video that I'll link to right here is I'm going to show you kind of my new school way of developing these lures that kind of eliminates all of this mess and only has a few drawbacks. Take care, tight lines, see you next video.